Let me start with asking you two questions. Are you as lab management staff and key stakeholders making the most of your lab? How can Biomerio help you and support you optimize and streamline lab workflow and performance? At the same time, improve efficiency and productivity while decreasing cost. If this is something of interest for you and your management, then I believe you are an, in the right place. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about lab consultancy as an overall approach. Key points I will discuss and share today is, are you as a lab doing lean or are you being lean? When it comes to lean um, as a business strategy, as a business management uh, tool, I would really want to discuss how exactly the lean is, is being utilized in, in the laboratory environment. As lab managers, how can you leverage and use lab consultancy as a service to dramatically improve the internal efficiency of work and the quality of results with the resources you already have? Let me start by introducing myself, uh, Mohammed Ahmed. I'm a certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt. Uh, I have been with Biomerio for more than 10 years. Uh, but I have been uh, working as a consultant for over 15 years, and my experience is basically in applying Lean and Six Sigma methodology, which are both internationally recognized uh, methodologies for process and performance improvement. My area of expertise is Lean, lean Enterprise, Six Sigma, Kaizen, advanced statistical technique, business process management, business analysis, project management, and facilitation skills. I'm also a chartered chemist for the province of Ontario, and I hold a master's degree in chemistry. I believe having a case study, sharing a case study, will really bring the true picture of how exactly uh, lab operations can be optimized and streamlined. So I've picked one good example of a recent case study. Uh, in this case, as a long-term partner, Biomerio held and supported this laboratory, look at their lab from a benchmarking perspective and best practices. Our lab consultancy service combines both business strategy and management techniques, which I have already mentioned, Lean, Six Sigma, Kaizen, 5S, et cetera. Along with our microbiology expertise enabled this laboratory not only meet their challenges, but also exceed their end customer satisfaction. The highlighted areas in the blue is what you see are the current situation and the highlighted areas in the green is after our suggestions and solutions were implemented. So basically, this customer or this laboratory were able to move from 79 samples per day to 112 samples per day. The total FTE was reduced by three, and in that, in, in that case, they were able to reallocate this full-time equivalent employees and staff, internal staff, to other value-added activities and to other uh, productive uh, works. Also, as far as productivity is concerned, this particular lab was able to improve their productivity from 5.6 samples per hour per FTE to almost 13.48 samples per hour per FTE which when we do the math is equivalent to about 143% improved productivity. Uh, there were additional um, improvement, what I would say soft benefits, such as uh, there was a flexibility to demand increased uh, close to on average 41%. And the operating cost uh, as far as ROI is concerned, that was reduced by more than 50%, 57% uh, to be more accurate. Okay, uh, let's actually get on the same page here. I want to align with my audience. Uh, being in this industry, 
for so many years and, and you know, uh, working uh, with many laboratories, both reference and the industry labs, uh, we all agree microbiology is rapidly changing and we need to adapt to change to be in the business. At the same time, microbiology has been done the same way for over a century, but in the past 10 years or 15 years, I have seen an evolution of change that is happening in the micro world. Uh, our customers are asking more accurate information. As far as the turnaround time is concerned, they want lesser and improved turnaround times or time to results. Uh, there are some outside pressures from ma management perspective, such as increasing workload, staffing shortage, budgetary pressures. These are all impacting the microbiology world. In a nutshell, I want to mention that the status quo is no longer meeting our needs. We need to evolve, we need to accept the continuous improvement mindset, mindset and we need to accept change for the better. Well, basically, it's more than just lean when it comes to the continuous improvement mindset. As Biomario, we really tailor the approach to your need. We bundle the solutions. We find the best fit that is possible for your laboratory, for your operations. Now, also, there are three pieces to the puzzle that I will be discussing about when I work to optimize and streamline the labs. Uh, there's a technology side, which is more related to automation. Uh, this is where uh, the, uh, the best fit comes in, you know, based on your requirements and based on your needs. Uh, we figure out the best technology that's available and that's, possible, that's uh, able to meet your existing desired needs. Uh, at the same time, uh, we look at the people part, you know, whether they're cross-trained, what exactly are their uh, start times and finish times? Uh, are they productive enough when it comes to uh, working on the daily samples? And there's a process side, which I also look at from a value-added and non-value-added perspective, uh, which I'll discuss more in the upcoming slides. Uh, basically, value-added activities are activities that are required that is what our end customers actually want us to do more. And this is what we should really focus on improving. And then there's non-value added activities, which are, um, which we need to significantly eliminate and remove from our processes in order to be more productive. Now, while there is no one right approach, having the right balance of people, process and technology can help customers adopt a holistic view to the entire lab organization. To make right choices and utilize existing technologies such as Tempo to its fullest, I would recommend that the people, the process, and technologies should all be balanced and are all important aspects of laboratory operations. I'm sure everyone here will agree that we cannot build the lab of the future without taking care of the challenges in each of these components. Let's start with people. Part of my service is to ask and investigate questions like what are the key issues? Who owns the process? Who is involved? What are their roles? Are they committed to improving it and working together? When we move on to the process, I really want to start at high levels, identifying the key big steps in which are very, very important to see the process from end to end. As consultants, as lab consultancy service, we also provide and do a detailed observation to capture the various layers which are involved and various exceptions as well. We usually focus on the high volumes and then standardize the process, which ultimately results in improving the efficiency of the lab environment. The number three, uh, which is the big piece of the puzzle is technology. See, once you have your people aligned and the process developed and clarified, the challenge you will face is to apply technology and instrumentation in a process fashion. 
And this is where lab consultancy as a change management uh, perspective will really help you gain all the additional uh, aspects in order to improve your key performance indicators. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, this is an interesting slide. Uh, I already talked about the value-added activities and non-value-added activities. Basically, uh, the benefits that I just talked about, uh, they are achieved using a step-by-step -step approach to workflow and lab optimization. Um, and it, on a very high level, it includes a complete lab performance assessment. We also develop a lean roadmap, which is tailored specifically to your needs with a focus on workload, existing resources, current organization, productivity levels, and turnaround time. All important key performance indicators or KPIs, however you want to call them. Implementing the suggested recommendations and leveraging the key performance indicators or metrics is a critical step. And this is where we really, as BioMario lab consultancy service providers, team up with the lab managers. That brings us to the topic of the value-added activities and the non-value-added activities. The thing that I highly stress is the non-value-added activities, which are the consumed resources but do not directly contribute to the process or service should be significantly eliminated from the process. See, value is always defined from the end customer perspective. And that's focusing on and keeping an, an, an open discussion about what exactly value means to your end customer. You will divide your process into both value-added activities and non-value-added activities. There are some good examples of non-value-added activities. And uh, the way I, I, I want, uh, or, or there's an acronym, the way that you can remember this, uh, this non-value-added work is Tim Wood. It starts with transportation, inventory, extra motion, extra walking, overproduction, and then downtime defects or rework. So as you see on this slide, there are eight types of non-value-added activities or waste that happen in micro labs. Lean is an extremely powerful tool in identifying and eliminating these eight wastes. Let's start with defects, even though I have put it in the end on this slide. Uh, but defect really means the work that contains errors, rework, mistakes, or lack of something that is necessary. Usually I have seen a lot of rework happening in the laboratory environment, which goes undocumented. And question yourself here, you know, how many times is it that you document or you end up documenting rework as a good metric that you monitor, that you observe, and, that, and in the end you analyze in order to find out what a good percentage of rework it is. Overproduction. That's a good example, uh, I would say, is making more media earlier and faster than is required. What about waiting? You know, the idle time created when samples or information or people or equipment are just not ready. That's the idle time. Um, big batches, if you're working in big batches, then there is waiting happening on each workstation. The invisible waste that usually goes unnoticed is the not utilizing employees' knowledge or skills and abilities. This is the waste of not leveraging technician and analyst full talent and capabilities. Then there are some additional ways such as transportation, inventory, extra motion, extra processing that we look at. Some other examples of non-value-added activities that I think of are uh, sample transportation from one floor to another, or even from one building to another that I have noticed. Uh, what about manual archiving and sample retrieval? 
the manual logs and documentation when LIMS or any other uh, information management system is in place. There are still manual logs and documentation that happens just from a regulatory perspective. So this is where we really need to find out what is required and what is not required and what is business required. There are three separate buckets that you can categorize your activities from a very, very high level. Um, manual dilutions and reruns, extra calibration, et cetera, you know, these are some of the non-value added activities that, that are some good examples that I have noticed in the lab environment. So basically, uh, you know, talking with having these discussions uh, with uh, VPs and directors and even lab managers, uh, there are certain types of bottlenecks that uh, are very, very visible in the lab environment that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, a lot of my customers, uh, when we provide lab consultancy as a service, they talk about, uh, you know, turnaround time or time to result. And uh, the, the, the highest request that we get is, I need faster turnaround times. I need greater efficiencies. Uh, so basically the way we put together, and, and this is just an, just an example, uh, the actual roadmap may vary from lab to lab depending on your issues and depending on your uh, uh, bottlenecks. Uh, but uh, in general, the solution that we talk about are, we, current, we study the current lab state which is based on facts and data. So there's a lot of historical data that we collect and analyze to identify the patterns and to identify where issues are. And based on our observations and looking at the data, I try to marry both my observations and your historical data together to get the desired solution in place. We also standardize the process, and this is where 5S as a tool comes in handy uh, to ensure consistent quality outcomes. Uh, it also brings in the accuracy, and this is where we try to bring in automation for accuracy and traceability purposes, because that really helps in standardizing. Uh, and what I have noticed is uh, on, your, on, on your QI side, um, for standardizing, uh, especially on the back end, and which really helps, Tempo really helps with the standardizing process, bringing in the, uh, the, the desired accuracy, bringing in the traceability, bringing in the consistency in your approach, and removing all the subjectivity, uh, which is currently what I have noticed when you use other traditional methods for, uh, or, or manual methods for your QI samples. In the end, um, in order to improve turnaround time, we really optimize the workflow, uh, ensuring the non-value added activities are removed, uh, such as the sample transport time, the wait times, you know, big batches are, are reduced, and the existing waste, both visible and invisible, is eliminated from the system. Another request that we get uh, on a very uh, high level is, I need to improve performance without increasing cost. So there's a cost factor, right, that is taken into consideration. So keeping the cost same uh, or keeping it minimized, uh, my customers, when they approach us uh, for lab consultancy uh, uh, projects, they talk about how can they improve performance. So again, this is an example, uh, you know, and, and it can, it really varies from lab to lab, like, like I have mentioned before. Uh, the solution we put together is we recommend the staffing model adjustment to balance their workflow and reduce overtime. And this is where we really need to work with your staff on the work, uh, at the workstation level. Uh, we do all the observations, we look at their schedules, we look at their start times, finish time, the sample arrival pattern is very, very important and critical as well. We look at what time the samples are, are, are uh, arriving and what time your, your staff uh, really start or what are the lab opening times. And we recommend a model that is just tailored for your specific laboratory. We also review the layout designs. Uh, lean lab design is an important aspect of improving performance. Um, ensuring that you're maximizing the existing space at your facility. 
Um, sometimes the instruments are not located at the right place. They are not in the right uh, order. Um, a good example is, uh, you know, once the sample is prepared, the incubator is so far that there's almost, they are sometimes located in a second or third room. And there's a lot of extra walking, extra transportation, extra motion, extra movement happening that is very, very visible. But at the same time, there's invisible ways that I already talked about having an electronic uh, system in place. There are some still manual laws that are being documented. So these are all the observations that we look at. We come, we visit your lab, we spend enough time. Uh, and when I, when I come in, I'm usually accompanied by a micro uh, field application specialist. So that way we team up. I'm looking the or observing the lab from a process perspective the micro person or the field application person who is very, very uh, uh, micro um, expert, they are looking at from a technical perspective, ensuring that, uh, you know, we, you are meeting uh, the desired or, or the solution they are, that, that we are putting together meets your end uh, result or meets your requirements to the fullest. Another request that we do get is I need to improve quality by eliminating errors and minimizing risk. How can we do that? Uh, this is a question asked by a lot of the lab managers uh, because this is where, you know, the quality comes in, especially as when you're managing the lab, you're concerned more about the quality side, you're concerned about the errors happening, the rework that is happening. How can you minimize this risk in the lab environment? So the solution that we usually work on and is we locate potential sources of mislabeling cross contamination that is happening inside the lab and cross contamination, believe me, is a huge, huge uh, uh, bucket when it comes to the number of, of samples that gets reworked. Um, cross contamination can happen even, you know, by, by air, which is very, very invisible. That's uh, that is something that we need to keep in mind in a micro lab. Uh, sometimes uh, in a particular lab, a good example is we divided or segregated or categorized the received samples by their uh, integrity, you know, like by, by their source. Uh, uh, sometimes there are high risk samples, there are mid risk samples, low risk samples that needs to be categorized separately. We also suggest improvements to accurately track rework and reduce its occurrence. Uh, so rework, if you are not monitoring, I highly suggest uh, start documenting rework, first of all, and then start tracking it, and this will actually help you reduce its occurrence. I mean, it's very, very important for us to understand the current situation even before we talk about the suggestions, the solutions, or your future state. What exactly is happening today? Where you stand? What is the percentage look like that is critical uh, for, for analysis? The thing that we do different, and this is where I believe we get the competitive edge when we bring in the lab consultancy service and help you improve lab operations is um, given our experience and given our position in the market, in the micro world and uh, having BioMeriu uh, expertise available uh, and, and uh, BioMeriu uh, Bio as a company, we share the best industry practices. Uh, we have a lot of lessons learned. We have a lot of case studies. We have a lot of papers published, journals, white papers that we can go back. Uh, and these are across the Americas and world. We can tap across the world uh, and we can benchmark what is the best practices uh, industry-wise, whether it's applicable to reference lab or the industry lab, and share those best practices uh, from a very process perspective, from an automation perspective, and from a technical perspective. I hope you're, you're understanding uh, the, the points here. Um, that way you get the best of both worlds, uh, you know, so, so you are, you're not alone, you're not in a silo improving your lab. Uh, once you start benchmarking, benchmarking, uh, that's when you really open up the doors and bring in um, lessons learned or best practices from the outside world. And that way you don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. Uh, straight away, you can apply these uh, time-tested um, uh, 
uh, practices or best practices and ensure that your lab is up and running to the full um, maximum potential. So basically, BioMario Lab Consultancy, we partner for success and performance. Uh, but at the same time, the reason we partner uh, and we, we work together with the lab people and with the lab management, uh, the reason is no one knows the lab better than you as a customer because you're the process owner. Ultimately, you're the process owner. As consultants, we come in, we look at your process, we give you some suggestions and recommendations, but ultimately you have to own and implement these suggested solutions. And this is where we, we partner to help you transition that change management phase after we leave the lab or after we propose the suggestions and solutions. Um, like I already mentioned, the other thing is we bring a unique combination of microbiology knowledge and also the excellence in leading business performance methodologies, which are internationally recognized. Uh, using Lean and Six Sigma tools over the years, I have kind of cherry-picked the best tools that are applicable to specifically microenvironment to help you improve and get to the desired state. Now, pictures really speak a thousand words. So the next few slides, I have some pictures that I'm sharing. Uh, that way you get an idea of exactly what I see in traditional labs, what I see where uh, there's minimum automation uh, where what I see where, uh, you know, labs are, are struggling, labs are trying to improve, but they have reached a wall or, or they don't exactly know what the next roadmap is to move to that next stage. A work in process is a huge, huge when it comes to traditional micro labs, and this happens in both industry and reference labs. Uh, you, you see big batches. You see too much work in progress, which ultimately uh, creates bottleneck upstream and downstream. Uh, automation just doesn't really help. Even if you bring in the best automation, if you're having or if you're running big batch sizes, then the automation will, will become a bottleneck because there will be a capacity attached to that instrumentation that you need to consider. And if you have these big batches that are coming out from incubation, immediately automation becomes a bottleneck. So you need to ensure that you know, your, your samples are well spread out. There is a proper flow from start to finish and all these visible and invisible bottlenecks are eliminated. It's part of change management and this is where lab consultancy helps you gain the, the desired benefit or gain the best possible capacity limit out of your instrumentation. Waiting times uh, for technicians and for equipment uh, just to perform a task. You know, there are how many times we see samples are being waited or queue of bags are just sitting there for someone to come in and start working. Uh, so this is where we, we ensure that uh, there's not much waiting happening. The extra waiting is a form of non-value added activity that I talked about in the beginning slides that needs to be significantly eliminated. Transportation, one of the biggest waste again. Uh, transfer of samples from one workstation to another, from one room to the other, from one building to the other. Yes, I have seen samples being transferred from one building to the other building in coolers, uh, which is there's a high risk of contamination, cross-contamination. There's a high risk of, I mean, sample integrity, talk about that. Uh, first of all, transportation is unsafe. Usually the way the technicians I have seen, they transport the sample is, uh, is, is not ergonomic enough. It's unsafe when it comes to safety. Um, uh, talking about safety, you know, uh, safety is the number one metric that I keep an eye on when we are working on uh, our, our improvement projects. Um, safety is followed by quality and quality is followed by uh, delivery. Uh, so these, th that's the pattern or that's the phases that I work on. Immediately, if there is something that comes to my observation that there's a safety issue, I bring that to the attention of manager and, and the director uh, so that it's taken care, uh, taken care of right away. 
I think safety is, is something that we shouldn't be wait until even until the report is for, formulated. Uh, something that is uh, that is a, a concern of safety should be immediately brought up, and that's what uh, we do in during our um, our consulting work. Uh, and like I said, we benchmark uh, every week. I'm in a new lab at a new customer in a new geographic uh, place. Uh, th that's the beauty of my work. I bring in so much. Uh, uh, best practices and uh, so much benchmarking information to the work that uh, uh, your work ultimately gets easier when the suggestions and solutions are formulated. We talked about ergonomic, we talked about the workstation study. Uh, sometimes incubators are too low, too high. All these are safety and ergonomic issues. More pictures. Um, as you see, uh, this is a good slide to represent the culture media preparation. Very, very manual process in a lot of the labs. This is the traditional way. It is st still done and performed in this manner, even though there is automated and uh, much accurate ways available that BioMario can help you with. Um, by the way, you can approach your uh, your um, uh, territory account manager uh, anytime. Uh, you know, Biomario sales managers are available uh, to help you and to educate you what automation is available in order to improve your processes. Uh, I have seen manual identification of tubes and plates. That happens a lot. The culture media preparation, which we talked about, is 100% manual. There's manual records for control of culture media produced. Altogether, there's excess of manual transcription that can be simplified, that can be, uh, you know, um, and our staff can be made uh, uh, to work on more value-added activities instead of this repetitive process. When it comes to admin work, talk about the admin work, and you all will agree. Uh, it starts from registration of samples, uh, information is entered by hand a lot of the time, um, and, and uh, you know, it, it it just spreads across the lab. Talk about how many duplication happens during this uh, information that is being uh, logged in. There are multiple logs that are uh, uh, that are stored with the same information. Uh, what I have seen, and this is very very um, common for me to observe, is even when uh, companies have an electronic system to document their uh, their uh, information or or to enter the information. Um, the things are entered in manual binders in logs by hand first, and end of the day, there's one technician that sits on a workstation and transfers over all this manually documented work that happened during the day into this electronic format. It could be Excel, it could be LIMS, it could be ConnectUp that uh, BioMario has um, uh, as a data management and a data uh, storage uh, um, uh, system. Uh, so this is a very, very common thing that I noticed. Uh, duplication should be avoided when and whenever possible. Sample preparation. Talk about this. Um, there is uh, no, uh, you know, when it comes to weighing and inoculation, it is not performed in a single step. There are multiple dilutions that needs to be performed, and everything is very, very batch oriented. Uh, I have seen the, the the whole process to be not ergonomic. Uh, the the location where the blenders are located during the sample preparation, or where the where the, the desired, even like sometimes pipettes, you know, that are required, uh, they are not located in proper places. Um, so all these things really uh, becomes a hurdle that we figure out, you know, what the exact process or what the desired process should look like uh, when it comes to uh, the, the, the best, uh, implementing best practices in your sample preparation area. Incubation, uh, there are some things that I have noticed. Uh, there is no management of incubation times. Uh, what, what is the desired time the reading should happen? Some readings, uh, they occur, you know, within 18 hours or the desired um, uh, um, incubation time. Uh, that's when early uh, reading happens. Manual temperature recording of incubators and refrigerators, that consumes a lot of time. 
So with that, uh, I come to uh, the, the same slide that we uh, talked about in the beginning, uh, right, the case study. Um, so this is how uh, basically, uh, you know, the, the objective and the focus of lean lab assessment uh, was met using lean principles. Basically, to sum it up, this assessment was divided into three parts. Firstly, we looked and observed the current state and focused on standardization of work and implementing visual controls. This was the very, very first step. Secondly, we looked at the people side or staffing side to ensure work effectiveness and productivity of work at the source and bench level was improved. And lastly, the workflow was observed as a system of input and output to create the sample flow. We also reduced batch sizes. Remember, I am telling reduce batch size, not eliminate batch work. In the end, we created a pull versus a push system. Also, a lean assessment matrix was used to identify existing process improvement gaps. Lean tools such as spaghetti chart, logic flow diagram, standard work charts were also used in, in this situation. Uh, basically, the, the solution was tailored and uh, you know, that's how this lab gained the desired uh, metrics, uh, which I, I talked about. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, this lab was able to perform 112 more samples per day, uh, reduced FTE or full-time equivalent, uh, the number was three, a 143% improved productivity, operating cost reduction of minus 57%, and flexibility to demand increase was close to 41%. The ideal setup, uh, like I said, we look at your uh, uh, lab and help you um, design the, 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 the best possible ideal setup for your instrumentation. Uh, for tempo or your QI indicators or your micro samples, this is the desired ideal setup that I would suggest. Um, two people performing the test in teams, depending on your sample volume. Again, sample volume is very, very critical, and that's the reason why I go back to your historical data. We get enough data to look at the patterns and any seasonal effects or any business effects that is ha happening with your sample volumes. And once that patterns are identified or once those trends are identified, then we provide you with the ideal setup. Uh, we also work on putting together a lean lab design, you know, where exactly these instruments should be located, where the incubator should be located, where your processing should happen, where your reading should happen, things like that. The typical average benefits, I get this question a lot. What, uh, Mohammed, uh, tell me what exactly are the typical key performance indicators and, and what, 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 what's the, uh, the road ahead when it comes to performance indicators look like for us? So after implementing my suggested recommendations and solutions, a lot of my customers uh, in a given time frame, uh, let's pick an average of six months uh, they were able to see an improved productivity anywhere between 10 to 30 percent. The errors were significantly reduced from 50 to 90 percent. The lead time, uh, some people call it uh, turnaround time, some people call it time, time to result. Uh, lead time is more manufacturing related, but I believe turnaround time is more applicable to the lab environment. Uh, this is reduced or improved by 50 to even 90 percent when you uh, the 90% is it happens when you bring in automation such as tempo for your quality indicators and you have good number of sample volumes. Um, and then once you, you implement our suggested uh, workflow, uh, that's when the lead time or your turnaround time, um, specifically for some of the parameters like yeast and other uh, organic, our customers have seen an improvement anywhere between 50 to 90%. Working process, again, reduced by 50 to 90 percent, implementing that uh, ideal workflow or, or the suggested workflow. And then floor space, depending on, uh, you know, what, what uh, uh, how many, uh, exist, depending on your existing equipment and instrument, uh, that can be improved or uh, once things are rearranged, you will see up to 20 to 50 percent of floor space being available for your more 
additional test. If you have forecasted to bring in more automation, if you have forecasted to start doing some more tests uh, based on, on your needs, uh, business needs, uh, then we look at the floor space and ensure that uh, the floor space is being used properly as well. So uh, basically from a very, very high level, these are the, uh, the, the KPIs that you can uh, expect uh, to see improved. Um, and I guarantee these numbers because a lot of, of our papers and a lot of our white uh, paper studies have resulted in, uh, in these results. So we have some good case studies. We have some good customer references that we can go back and, uh, um, and statistically prove that these are the percentages that you will for sure see improved um, uh, with implementing the suggested solutions. So with that, I come to end of uh, today's webinar. Uh, I thank you for your time and uh, feel free to contact me or uh, your uh, territory account manager, uh, sales account manager, uh, or the marketing manager. Uh, you know, or, you know, feel free to approach us and, and talk more about uh, the lab consultancy services. If you have any questions, email me uh, or even call me. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I prefer just pick up the phone and call me and we can have a good discussion or I can answer any of your questions that you have and uh, we can take it to the next level. Uh, thanks again. Thank you very much for your time today and uh, hope you have a nice day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.